okay, data collection. Um, so the process, how to identify the right people. This can seem a little bit challenging. Um, I was in Finland when I completed my, my master's and I didn't know anybody in practice, anybody in retail. So it did seem a little overwhelming. Um, a good way to do this is through your personal networks, people that you know. Um, you can look at company websites and find a lot of information about um, the, uh, like the managers and the employees or, or something like press releases. You can see people that are important in your area of interest. Um, and also you can use LinkedIn, which is what I did, and I'll discuss that in, uh, momentarily. Um, how to make contact. I think one thing that's important here is cultural norms. So some countries, depending on where you're coming from, some people really like um, direct communication by phone. Um, some people prefer email, chat. There's different um, forms of communication, obviously. And, and I would think about where you are and who you're contacting and how you think they would prefer to be contacted to try and make sure that they're engaged with you in the best way. And when to begin, as soon as possible. Um, the earlier that you can do it, the better. But of course, I would make sure that, for example, if you plan on doing something like interviews, try to refine your questions. Um, and here is where a supervisor can be really helpful. Um, you might think that you're developing interesting questions and maybe they are interesting, but they might not help you to answer your overall central question. And um, so this is really important that you make sure the questions are refined. And I would, um, again, just add to, to ask somebody to check through them for you. And another thing you should consider here is the ethics. Um, for my research, ethical um, consideration was of, of, of course something I thought about, but it wasn't um, sensitive material that I was that I was looking at or anything like that. But potentially, if you're working in in with certain materials, you need to consider um, the consent of the people involved and things like that. And you can discuss this with your supervisor when you first meet them. So how did I do it? Um, finding the right people. Um, so I conducted theoretical sampling. And here you can see a copy of what, what theoretical sampling was in my case. So I, I limited certain criteria about the people that I wanted to interview. So here you can see I had retail managers and I specified the country, which was the UK and Finland, the type of firm I was interested in with business to consumer retailers and um, the experience I wanted them to have a minimum of two years experience. And then on the right hand side, you can see the rationale for that. Um, so everything you do in your thesis must be justified. Why did you make the decision and how does it help you to, um, to answer your question? So this was a really nice way to think about the type of person or type of people that you would like to interview um, and making sure that every, every decision you make has been thought through. Um, and then I used LinkedIn as my method to contact people. I sent out around 250 invites and the response rate was 27%. Um, and I conducted the interviews and contacted people between April and August 2019. So you can see that here the, the time frame is quite long, uh, which is why I would recommend to start as soon as possible or at least identify the types of people you would like to interview or be involved uh, with as soon as possible, the types of companies, because um, it could be that maybe, unfortunately, you can't be involved in the in way you really want to be because of they might not have the time or because of Corona or other things like that. So the earlier you start, the better, really. Um, I should also mention here that somebody said something about writing the thesis as um, a couple or two people. Um, and it wasn't recommended to me to do that at the time. Um, but we, I did collect the data with another student who happens to be my partner. And we both collected the, the data together. So we, we contacted people, we interviewed people, or I interviewed I interviewed some people and he interviewed some people, but then the transcripts, we both helped each other and um, transcribe the data. Um, and then we helped one another to, to begin the first process of data analysis. And um, so I'll speak a little bit about that now. Okay, <laughs> so to start, data analysis, supervisors are wonderful, yes. Um, so for me, I had no experience of analyzing qualitative data at all before I started my master's thesis. So here I was really hoping for some guidance. Your supervisors will have experience in, in particular types of analysis. And that doesn't mean that you have to, you have to choose the analysis types of analysis they're interested in, but it really does help because they can then help you with your analysis. Um, so here I would, I would ask them for help. Another way that you can um, that you can approach the data analysis is by using SAGE research methods. 
Um, on the library, you can go to different databases and Sage research methods really helped me a lot. Um, for example, I use framing analysis um, and also for coding and things like that. It was really helpful to type in like how to code or uh, qualitative coding methods. And then you can see like easy guides of how to do these types of things. Um, so I'll move on to that at the end. Uh, data generation um, involved preparing interview questions, like an interview guide. I did semi-structured interviews. So the questions were like scaffolding. Um, I didn't follow every single question. I didn't ask everyone each question, uh, but they were there to support and like guide the interview through. Yes, I would recommend getting a recording device, at least one. Um, I had um, an experience where one of my recording devices didn't work the whole time. It looked like it was recording and it wasn't. And if it wasn't for my second recording device, I wouldn't have had anything. And um, so make sure that you have a reliable recording device, at least if you don't want to have two. Um, the next stage of the process involved transcribing the audio. So this is quite tedious. It takes a long time. Um, you can go through, you have to listen to everything they say and try to type it out. There are different ways of transcribing. Um, I transcribed everything, every word. Um, I didn't trans I didn't capture like pauses and things like that, which I know some people, if you're interested in like discourse analysis, maybe you're interested in, in things like that. Um, but this can take a long time. I know that people can pay for transcription if you're lucky enough to have some kind of funding. However, I would really recommend transcribing some of the interviews yourself because um, you really get to know the data really well, especially if you're working with small sets of data. Um, myself and my research partner conducted 26 interviews, which is why it took quite a long time, uh, but you're not expected, I don't think, to, uh, to conduct uh, that many. Um, and if you have like eight to 10 interviews or something like that, then you should be able to transcribe them yourself and really get to grips with the data. After each interview, we wrote in an interview reflection diary. So here we were just capturing like, what are the main thoughts that immediately come to me from what somebody said in the interview? Um, throughout the interview, we took notes, but then this diary was like a more formalized um, or a better organized way of writing down some reflection notes. And it really helped as I moved through the process because if I needed to go back to something, I could just quickly look back in my book um, and remember what had been said. And this can also contribute towards your thesis. You can include this um, and say that this is something you did in your method. In terms of data analysis, um, I started off by just highlighting text um, with the, like a highlighting tool on, on Microsoft Word, uh, just to see like what were the main units of thought, what were the main, the main points, the most prominent issues that were raised by the managers in the discussion. Um, from here, I actually used um, a qualitative research software, uh, analysis software called Atlas TI. And there are different uh, types of analysis software you can use, both qualitative and quantitative um, have, have different softwares that are useful. Like if you're interested in, in quantitative, you might be using like SPSS or Stata or something like that. Um, and these can really help. Um, it took me a few times to have to go through some tutorials online to learn how to do them, uh, how to utilize what I wanted, but they can be really useful if you have um, complicated data that you want to code. And the method I used for coding was called in vivo coding. Um, and you can see at the bottom of the box on the, on the right hand side, the reference um, that I use for Saldana, the coding manual for qualitative researchers. And I really recommend this if you've never coded before and you want to see what it looks like. Um, you can find this on Sage Research Methods, um, but it was really helpful for me. Um, when I'd already done all of the coding, I started getting sticky notes and trying to like group things together. It really helped to like take things off the computer and then interact with it. That's just how I like to work. Um, and then I could group things together and draw connections. Um, so anything that helps stimulate ideas, uh, I recommend doing whatever you think works for you. And then ask for feedback on your data analysis. So it may be that um, you're, you've just not seen something or maybe there's, you're struggling and, and you need help. Again, supervisors here can be really helpful um, to try and see some of the connections that maybe you haven't seen. Mm -hmm.